Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mind Muscle Connection. I'm Joe Klimzescu with Tyler Weeb. And Tyler, let's start out with a question. I've done this to you before. I know you love it. Love it. What is the equation for risk reward? Give me the math. How do you, how do you decide? <laughs> so this is, I mean, it's a great question because this is something that I actually talk a lot about with my clients. And I, I more so do the, you know, the cost benefit analysis. And I'm like, you've got this goal. Here are the costs of reaching said goal. Does, does that jive with your life? Does that go with what you're willing to sacrifice, willing to give up? Because I don't think a lot of people think about the cost that it takes to reach a certain goal. Sometimes, you know, we just see, and we're going to you know, use the fitness industry, for example, because I think this is something you and I, as coaches, you know, deal with a lot for, you know, maybe non-competitors or even people who want to compete for the first time. They see all of, you know, on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, you know, these amazing shredded people. And a lot of times in our industry, you know, we don't talk about the cost of getting to that point. You know, we kind of glorify this walk around year round 10 or sub 10% body fat. And you're able to eat 4,000 calories a day when that is not even close to being realistic. And having that conversation with clients of, okay, you're telling me you want to do this. Here's what you're going to have to do. And a lot of times that kind of gives them that dose of reality of, oh, okay, maybe not that it's bad to go, I'm not willing to give that up because I think that shows a great understanding of, you know, who that person is and they understand themselves. And it's like, oh, okay, maybe I'm not willing to, you know, do five, six hours of cardio a week on top of my training and eat only 1800, 1500 calories a day. So maybe they're, they're not numbers exactly in a mass sense, but I think that is a very important conversation to have with each and every single client of, okay, yeah, here's the goal. This is what it's going to cost you to reach that goal. Is that, is that worth it? Is that actually truly worth it to you? So yeah, a, a very important question to have, because I think we do get a lot of clients coming in and they're wanting kind of that sub 10% body fat, et cetera, et cetera. When it's like, Hey, you know what? Like, let's maybe just focus on losing those first 20 pounds, right? Like let's, let's work our way towards that. Let's see how you do with the cost of just dropping 20 pounds and, you know, maintaining that. Can we do that first? And then maybe we can start to build on that. You know, it's funny. As soon as we're done recording this, I'm doing a workshop on delusion and the, the <laughs> neurophysiology of how we delude ourselves and how we don't want to believe the truth. We want to believe the pie in the sky, best case scenario. The interesting thing is, you went right toward as a coach, the cost, the negative, the sacrifice, the give up. You as your own advocate on the other side, you as your own bodybuilding client, you as just you know a husband and a, and a father and a person trying to build a career and live your best life. How many times do we just look at the reward? Oh, it'll be great. I'll just do this. And, you know, it's going to work out and I'll make this investment. I'll start this project. I'll build this business. I'll go over here and do this. And we always think of the highest possible outcome and we leave the cost and the risk out. I, I will say my biggest, most regrettable decisions are exactly because of that, because I absolutely did not go down the road of thinking the worst case scenario could actually happen. So I, I did look this up because I wanted to see what others say. And there is an actual ratio, you know, because business, if you're, if you're doing an MBA or you're an investor, there are equations to look at risk reward. And, and a lot of people look at three to one as a central starting point. And then it has to do with your personality, perhaps the context, what you're risking and what the potential reward is. But, but think of it like this, as an investment, you, you've got $1,000 to invest, you know, in a single stock, it could go great, could, could suck, you could lose it all. So three to one, you, you have to say, as just a starting point, if I risk this, if the potential cost, I lose it all is this, then I at least need a three times potential reward. So three to one, I need that. So 
reversing that into our social goals as we're describing this a, a, a bodybuilding type or physique sport or even health transformation pursuits it is is what it costs me it, it, am i going to really get a three-time gain and and i and i think it would be great to list for our audience people in those really high aggressive training and, and physical pursuits you know the things that it really does cost it can cost us relationally it can cost us occupationally there are opportunity costs if i'm going to spend all of my time like you said doing this extra stuff toward that goal i can't spend that time doing other things what would i have been doing that i now have lost so I, I wonder if if that is something that needs to be a little bit more normalized, like like really breaking this down into a pro and a con list, a benefit analysis, as you said, like let's put it on paper and go through it and make sure we are completely aware of what we're about ready to step into. Definitely, and I think, and I, and 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 I think that's like as the coach's job is to not come at it just you know from a negative viewpoint. I think it's just coming from a very play a, a place of realistic expectations and an ultimate care for that client right if if we truly want what's best for our client we're not going to hide anything from them what they you know should expect we need to be able to tell them hey this is exactly what to expect this is what realistically we're looking at so that then they are able to kind of take all of that information and you know make a decision based off of that. We can certainly help them make that decision, but they always have to make it themselves. Anytime like I have someone where, you know, maybe they want to jump into a contest prep for the first time. I, I almost try and scare them away from it a little bit, because if I can do that with just my first conversation, then we know we're not ready for, for a contest prep. Like if someone can convince you just with one conversation that you're not ready for this, then you're definitely not ready for this. Now, granted, you know, it, that person goes, yeah, let's do it. All right. Like, here we go. Um, and they they can understand the the expectations. But I think also part of it, too, is just going through it for the very first time and, and really, truly getting an understanding of it. So, you know, kind of on the same hand, yeah, we have to almost be able to jump, uh, you know, jump in with both feet and just go, hey, you know what? I'm going to give this a go. And, and we're going to see what happens, right? Because I think that that benefit there, like you said, that three to one, you know, when it comes to something like contest prep, it can have a big positive effect on that person. You know, it might be the very be the hardest thing that they've ever gone through in their life. I know my first contest prep, that was easily the hardest thing I had ever gone through. And <laughs> that, I mean, I guess that's a bit of a privilege, but still it can really, you know, show someone a lot about themselves and teach them a lot. And, you know, having those expectations and knowing what might and what is most likely going to occur through that, you know, that can kind of really help them, you know, set them up for success in that sense of, oh, okay. Like I knew I was going to be hungry. I knew I was going to be tired. I knew I was going to do this. And then it really just allows them to grind through it and, and really push through. I think that's also just a side note of, of so important for a coach to go through a contest prep if they're coaching contest prep people, because now you can really share that experience together. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would love to say, as I look at somebody, like I'll use you as an example, I, I think you're a very conservative person. You're, you're really laid back, thoughtful, reserved wouldn't take you as somebody who's a high risk taker, but I've also seen you make really stupid, impulsive decisions. So it seems, Thanks. <laughs> and myself as well, yeah, I'm going yeah, to throw yeah. myself under the bus here in a second. Yeah. Trust me. Um, like, like I said, the, the worst mistakes I've ever made have been yeah. because I just, just jump, you know, before I look. And it seems like there's some context to this, what our priorities really are where we really want to delude ourselves intentionally, where we don't want to see reality. But again, it's, it's that towing the line on both sides, not just for ourselves, but for those around us, because you're exactly right. If I'm even working with a client in a training mode, whether it's online programming or in my facility as a physical therapist, as a strength coach, as somebody with 40 years of training experience, 
I'm never going to do things that are that risky for them. I'm going to be very caref- careful to build, you know, resilience in the kinetic chain. I'm going to take out certain movement patterns I see and strengthen them before I put them back into compound lifts. I'm going to leave reps in reserve. I'm going to, you know, you know, people who have injuries, I'm very, I'm just constantly asking them, is this okay? How do you feel? Blah, blah, blah. But then myself as my own worst idiot, you know, scheduling neurosurgery right now for a disc repair, I'm doing one rep maxes on deadlifts, setting records, <laughs> like, you know, and, and my, my thought is yeah. it'll be fine. I, I feel great. I, I feel good today. Yeah. This will be good. Um, and so again, like we we're just, there are some things we're willing to risk, some things we're not, but when you put it on paper, when you can really say, Hey, what are the benefits I truly get from this versus the risks? There are probably some places I can reduce those risks. And so I'll give you an example. Um, just one of my current clients, when he was younger, he th- somebody in the gym said, here, take this, you'll get jacked. So before he knew what he was doing, he was taking three of the strongest oral steroids anabolic you could take. Oh my God. In 12 weeks, he had gained 40 pounds. And I mean, I, he showed me pictures. I'm like, geez, like, uh, unbelievable. But now, 20 years later, after two gyno surgeries, you know, he's left wondering, I don't do it. Did I do any liver damage? Am I going to face consequences? I mean, it sure seemed fun when I was in my 20s. What were the rewards for that guy? He, w- he wasn't even training to be, you know, a pro bodybuilder. He had no delusions of being Mr. Olympia. It was just like, I guess I just want to be bigger without any, any, any thought toward potential risk. And I like those are the things before you make some what you may think are simple decisions, think of how it affects you, think of how it affects your health, think of how it affects those around you. Again, those sunk costs or or opportunity costs like, you know, occupational time and so forth. Oops, here's my camera. Um, So I don't know. I mean, you know, what are some other things that you think that people often miss in just going forward without really calculating the true risk? Man, I, 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 that's 40 pounds in 12 weeks. That's insane. Well, and again, so, uh, so let, let, let me backtrack for a minute. Because yeah, sorry. Like, just, I've been blown away by that. <laughs> but I, no, I'm glad you came back there. I'm interrupting you, not, yeah, not the other way around. Um, you know, what if, what if he actually did, you know, he was a great bodybuilder. He had a future. He loved this. He was willing to spend 10 years grinding and he literally did become Mr. Olympia. I mean, I, I have clients who've done that. I have clients who have won drug-free world championships and now they have won Mr. Olympia titles because they spent 10 years doing the work. And, and they would probably say, I, I did it right. I did it, you know, the best I could. I know the risks and, and I got the reward. You know, it yeah. paid the, the same exact action can pay off for somebody, yeah. but not others. So, yeah. So, it, it, the, I mean, the, the hypo, or the, not the hypothetical, but the question begs, you know, what's the difference between those people and then that person, right? Like, what's the different thought process? What's the, the different life experience? Like what, you know, what causes one person to make that decision and the other, the other decision, right? And I'm reminded, like this discussion is reminding me of, of that, I think it was like a survey or something when they uh, did it with like Olympic athletes and they're like, Hey, you know, if you want to take X drug, but it'll guarantee you an Olympic mm-hmm. medal, but it'll take 10 years off your life. It was easily more than 50% said that they would take it. Right. Like, and so I think, you know, that you just have that right there. And, you know, again, where does that mentality come from? But I think it's just this, we're, we're so willing to put off consequences down the road, right? Like, we're like, oh, we're fine right now. And we just, we have as humans, this just this inability to think of consequences 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And then in that sense, we even have the ability to think of the consequence. We have it right in front of us. It's going to kill us 10 years earlier. And we still say, yes, yeah, that, fine. I'll do it. Like, let's go. And so it's, I think, just trying again to get the client to, to think in this sense of, hey, you know, w- what's it going to look like in five years, six years, seven years? And this is something that I've, again, just recently tried to integrate so much into my coaching. And anytime I have a conversation with a client on their immediate goals, I'm trying to remind them that we're also in this for the next 10, 15, 20 years. 
And that's, you know, what we're doing. That's what we're working towards their overall health. And again, having those short-term goals are great. I think they're fantastic. Let's crush them, but let's not lose sight of that 30,000 foot view of, Hey, you know what? I'm in this for life. Well, I'm going to rotate this 360 and, and look at the other side, which is what, what are the risks to not doing something to improve your health, to improve your life? So I know a lot of people, I mean, I, just in the last week, I've had several in, inquiries from general population clients and competitors alike. And there does seem to be some trepidation for some people. It's like, oh man, I just, I know I need to do this. I don't know if it's the right time, but you know, so-and-so recommended you. And you know, it's, I, I think some of that hesitation is fear of failure you know, fear of the work. I know it is going to cost me. I've been down this road before. I don't like that cost, but what is the actual benefit on the flip side of this equation? So, you know, let's say you don't do this, you put it off and now you feel worse. Now you maybe get irreparable heart disease. Maybe you do take a few years off your life of your, as you're saying that you can't reverse out of. And so I think sometimes we have to look at the things that we know we should do or know would improve our lives. And yet we don't love that and say, I have to be willing to give up something. You know, I, I don't like tracking food, but I know that's going to get me in my goal. I have to do that. And I find myself as a coach, sometimes almost acquiescing to clients to make it easier. Oh, you don't have to do that. It'll be okay. We'll just start back here. Oh, we'll get to that later. Let's just start here. And am I doing a disservice by making it too easy? And then that kind of softens up the playing field too much for them. And if I would have just almost like resistance training, you know, get their willpower muscles a little stronger, get them used to the work ethic a little bit sooner, maybe they would have succeeded. So again, you know, this can work both ways. It's again, you know, tiptoeing on that line and finding that balance for each individual person. It's, you know, where and how far and how hard can I push them in their current state, but not so much where it's going to overwhelm them. So again, yeah, like you said, it's just like resistance training, right? We need, kind of need to go through that general adaptation syndrome, right? We, we challenge, challenge, oh, it's getting easy. Okay, new challenge, right? And we kind of got to build it a little bit like that and really find that balance, um, I did have another point off of what you were saying, but it's, it's, it slipped my mind now a little bit. Um, let, let, let me throw something in there. Yeah. Yeah. See if I can get it again. Yeah. As I was saying, I, I may acquiesce a little bit too much toward a client's default to not get into the deep work quite as early. I, I, two clients came to my mind, two clients who literally stopped this week. And I, I look at why they stopped and it's a matter of them saying, you know, Hey, it's, I'm just not doing great right now. I think I'm wasting your time. It's just not the right time. And I swear, these are two clients that I literally did make it too easy. Yeah. I decided to meet them exactly where they are, not put too many barriers up front. And it just makes me wonder had I said, this is what it's going to take at a minimum barrier to entry, you have to be willing to do this. And what I'm saying is putting the risk rewards on paper. This is yeah. what it takes. Are you yeah. willing to pay that? Maybe they would just would have said no. And you know, it would have you know, saved themselves Same some result. frustration. Yeah. Or they'd have been like, yeah, let's do this. And they would have been a little bit more hardened to the goal in the first place. Yeah. So I, I did remember what I was going to say, but I do want like, is it worth it's probably more worth to try and push someone and then push them away because at least, you know, you were trying to really get them to do the work instead of softening up. Right. It, it, you might get the same result, but I think as a coach, I almost would rather, Hey, you know what? At least I really tried to push that person and, and get them to get better. But it, it comes back to when you did the 360, you know, let's turn it around the other way. And what can you not afford to do? And, yeah, to me, your health is priceless. Like there, you know, no amount of money can really, you know, cover a healthy human being. I mean, you just look at the US and the healthcare system and how much you're having to pay and how much it costs. And man, it, a gym membership, you know, some whey protein and some gym clothes. Man, I, to me, that that cost benefit right there it pays for itself. 
tenfold. You are going to feel better. You are going to live longer, hopefully. Um, and you're going to be able to move better. You're going to look better in your 60s and your 70s. Like to me, training, eating, all of this, this is literally the fountain of youth. Like we found it, people. We just have to put in the work. You, you Canadians always with your free health care making fun of us down here. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, I don't want to brag or anything. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to leave you guys with this. We appreciate you watching and listening to the Mind Muscle Connection. But one of the things that I kind of surprise myself in this topic is, is literally how beneficial it could be to put it on paper where you can see what that risk and reward will be almost in a monetary concrete sense. But I think that also helps you try to mitigate hard those risks. So if you do take that plunge. So uh, anyway, we appreciate you guys always uh, giving us any feedback on topics you want. I have a lot of clients who who have been loving these episodes, Tyler. And uh, uh, they're, I, the comments I get are there, we're really hitting some deep topics that just aren't talked about. And, and it helps in those aggressive health and fitness pursuits. So Tyler, I will see you next time. And uh, we will see you as well in the Mind Muscle Connection.